I'm here with our 2019 Subaru BRZ and today we're going to try to improve the sound quality of the factory sound system by making some changes. So I did a little bit of research poking around on the web and I think I have a pretty good handle on how the sound system works and the way it's wired. Now we're not going to replace the head unit because the 2019 BRZ comes with a pretty decent head unit. The, um, it's got Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, Nav. Uh, it's got really all the features you want. The hands-free works great. So if there's a negative about it, I'd say the screen is a little small. But other than that, um, functionality, there's really no reason to replace it and spend more money. And also, keeping it uh, with the OEM look is, to me, always better. Um, and when you go to sell it, it's always nice to have the stock radio in it. So we're not going to touch that. But let's talk a little bit about how this factory stereo works. Okay, the BRZ has eight speakers total. You've got two on each side of the dash right here. You've got a door, the door speakers and you have speakers in the rear okay now the way it works is the head unit powers six of these eight speakers the head unit sends a full range signal up to the front dash where there's a mid-range speaker and a tweeter you can see through there the mid-range speaker these are all two ohm speakers by the way so if you're just going to replace the speaker um, you want to find a 2 ohm replacement, uh, they're hard to find, and if you just replace them with a regular 4 ohm, you're not going to get the same output, so things will get a little unbalanced. Um, Alright, so going back to the wiring, so the head unit drives these dash speakers, those are wired in parallel. Um, the tweeter, so it's a full range signal that goes to those speakers. But the tweeter has an actual high-pass filter built in. Um, it's got some capacitors on it, on the driver. So even though it gets a full range signal, it's only playing the highs. Okay, so that full range signal from the dash gets <coughs> sent through the wiring harness to a dedicated amp in the back of the seat. Um, that dedicated amp is the amp that drives the door speakers, okay? These are woofers that aren't capable of playing a full range signal. They, they're intended to play low frequencies. So that amp in the back actually has a low pass filter built in. So the full range signal goes into the amp, but only a, the lows come out to, uh, to uh, go to the woofers and basically it amplifies the signal and it filters and goes to these speakers. So you have to consider that if you're just replacing the amp in the back, if you take a full range signal, amplify it, send the full range signal to these drivers, it's gonna sound like crap. These things are not capable of playing highs. They're just the low frequencies. <clears throat> All right, so lastly, you've got these rear speakers. <clears throat> that's a full range uh, signal that goes to them they're from the head unit um, I personally I don't think the rears or these front mid-range uh, speakers really do much for sound um, they just pretty much fill the sound for the car I don't think they're very important okay so how do we improve on the factory sound well if you listen to it, the, the sound system, it really isn't bad. I think a lot of people would be perfectly fine with it. Um, kind of the problem with the BRZ when it comes to the sound system is that it's a loud car. There's not a lot of sound deadening. There's a lot of road no noise in the car. So the sound system has to overcome that. So to make improvements on the sound system, you really kind of look at it, each component, and... If you do, you kind of find that the door speakers are probably the weakest link. Um, they're reproducing the lows. 
Now they're not going to go as low as a subwoofer because they're six and a half inch driver. They're just not capable of going that low. And they do have a low pass filter. So they're not going to try to play anything too high in the range. But if you isolate that speaker, people have done it. I've tried to put my ear to it. Um, it doesn't sound that great. And there's not a lot of power driving it too. That's the other thing. So I think the improvement would be to put more power behind the speaker and then add a subwoofer because then you're, even if the, the low range isn't being produced properly, the sub is going to kind of take over and kind of overshadow any deficiencies. So that's kind of the idea, right? Add a sub, but also address the bad woofers. To do that, we're going to replace the factory amp in the back with a quality amp. We're going to send a, a accurate amplified signal to the woofers, which should clean up that sound. And we'll also use that amp to drive the subwoofer. So now that we have our plan of attack, let's start the install. All right, first things first, let's disconnect the battery. All right, so you got the trunk open. Actually do that before you disconnect the battery. And we're gonna take this tray out here. Oh, look at that, it's loose. Okay, here's the amp, if you can see it. It's like perfectly centered from the trunk and the back door to be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it's, you gotta reach in one way or the other. All right, if you guys can see, we've got these little plastic fasteners here. And I think it just actually snapped, but uh, I, do have, I do have others. I can replace it. really tough because you're you got foam and plastic see here's here's what it looks like here's the other one that third one went flying. Maybe it didn't break, but we'll see. All right, so where is it being retained now? Right here. There, you just need metal. All right, you see what we did here? So now we can get at this amp. These look like 10 millimeter. See that little tiny thing? It's really not very impressive looking, but I mean, it's a factory system, so that's kind of what you expect. Now this wiring, that's the key to getting our signals and uh, our speaker connections to the new amp. So, uh, let's talk about that connection right now. Okay, so this is a harness that's made by Metra. You can see the part number right here. And this, these uh, plugs plug into the factory wiring harness and the BRZ. So rather than cut any wires, I can just plug this into that multi-pin connector and now I've got all my connections that I can make to the new amp. 
this is the power uh, side and we're not going to use that I'm going to need to run my own power to the new amp because it is it's going to exceed 15 amps um, and it just needs more power so this is really the only thing I need but let's talk about this um, this comes with like the OEM Toyota color codes so the pinouts each pin the location of each color um, goes to a standard Toyota loom and we need to make some changes to fit this BRZ because they used a little different pinout. Um, the connector still works. You just need to move these conductors into different positions. Now, you don't even have to do that. You could just use it as is. The colors won't be consistent. So they'll be coming into the connector and then changing color. So it might be confusing if you ever go back and make changes. So you may as well do it now, it's easy enough, and I'll show you uh, the procedure to do that. Um, I'm also going to put the link for the pinout locations, okay, so that'll be in the description of the video. You're going to really need to go to the website that shows the pinouts as you work through, or you could follow this. I mean, that's what it should look like when you're done. I've already done it on, uh, in this video. but. You'll see the procedure and you have the information to make that those changes. Okay, so now we've got this that we can plug right into the standard wiring harness in the BRZ. Alright, real quick just to show you how to remove these conductors from the connector. Say I want to remove this black one, right? You find the pin in the connector. In this case, this is the black pin right here. You're going to put your tool, this is a little flat head, but you could use like a needle or something that's going to fit in that space just above the connector. And you're just going to kind of press, I'm putting pressure on it, you can't see it, but you can see I'm kind of putting pressure on it. And it just releases, okay? So... When I insert it, this might give you, see how this is a little bit of see-through here, a little translucent? Let's see if you can see what happens when I insert this. And listen to. You hear it click? And that piece of plastic came down and retains the pin. That's what you're trying to release with this tool, okay? All right, while we're on the subject of the wiring harness, let's talk about the amp, the replacement amp. So I actually uh, got this. This is the JL Audio XT500 slash 3 V2. And I've used these in the past. They're great little amps, little Class D amps, so they're small powerful accurate quality you can go cheaper I'm not saying you got to use this this is more at the um, higher end you could you could just get a four channel class D amp um, for probably a little over a hundred bucks and you could accomplish the same thing that I'm doing this just adds more features and makes it more adjustable which is you know uh, not really necessary you can get away with less than this let's just talk a little bit about the wiring so we have this connector that's going to plug into the oem wiring harness then it's going to give us all of these connections that we can make to the amp um, and again in the description of the video you'll see the link that'll describe each one of these connections so you'll know what's what um, basically We've got the full range um, signal that's going to go into the amp. Now this amp only allows RCAs. Uh, there's no screw terminals for the input. So I did buy this and I'm going to solder this onto the harness. Now that full range signal goes in and it's going to power the front doors and it's 
going to power the subwoofer that'll be in the back in the trunk. <clears throat> so the full doors, again, you don't want to send a full range signal to them. So in this case, I happen to have these left over from um, when I used them years ago in a home theater setup. This is a low pass filter. So what I'll do is I'll have that in line with my input and this filters anything above 100 hertz so it's only going to send 100 and below to the doors which probably they are probably capable of playing higher but i don't have you know I, this is what i have i'm going to try it and like i said i've got my plan b if it doesn't work great so that's for the fronts and then for the sub output you know this has got a low pass filter and we can do all the filtering and adjustment at the amp so it's a matter of doing a little bit of soldering and connecting um, these and then everything else will go to screw terminals because the output for the front speakers will go back into the harness so it's just a matter of you know putting those connections directly into the amp um, i may have to lengthen these two i may have to add some length of wire but we'll see let's uh take the old amp out all right remember we're not going to use this plug this is the power for the amp and we're going to have to run our own power so let's get some 10 millimeter wrenches and we'll remove that amp All right, those front two are pretty easy to get to. This back one is a little bit more of a challenge, so not sure if you're gonna get an open end on it. I'm gonna get some pliers to squeeze that so I can just pull that wiring harness off. All right, here's the amp. So the idea will be to use this, these mounting posts and this location for the new amp. Okay, I'm just test fitting the amp and trying to figure out how I would want it to go. And this is about as good as I'm gonna get it. And I have no idea how I'm gonna secure it, but the orientation is good. This is the um, harnesses are underneath. I could run the wires up and in, and it looks like it's low enough where it clears everything. The rug may kind of bump up a little bit there, but this piece can go back in into place. So I gotta figure out how to secure it because it it's kind of. Uh, the surface is all uneven and there's no mounting points. You can see this post is not even close to the one and only uh, place to to fasten to on this amp. So uh, let me play around. Okay, we're so we're setting up the harness. Um, we know that the purple comes from the head unit and will go out to the input of the new amp. Okay, so purple is right channel, green is left. So we want to solder our RCAs to both the right and left channel. And we're going to solder this. And let's do the same for the positive.
looks pretty beefy cable, this RCA cable, which is actually nice to work with. All right, while I have the soldering iron hot, I'm just going to pretend these tips because these will be going into the amp. That way you don't have those uh, little strands flying, flying all over the place. All right, before I went too far, I wanted to double check the wiring, make sure that everything would work. So right now you can see I've got the harness plugged in. I've got my connections. I have the low pass filter here. Um, I'm actually picking up power from the stock uh, wiring. So uh, that 15 amp circuit is powering this. I don't have a sub. Um, so I'm only putting out power to the front speakers. So it should be adequate. Um, so when we go in the car, Now, I've checked it. It seems to work fine. I've played around with the levels of the woofer, the front door speakers, because that's all we're driving right now, so check it out. You can hear the amp turned on. So it started out, you only heard the highs. That's pretty thick bumpy just from these front speakers way more power the power makes the difference so like I said you don't have to go with this amp but if you can put power behind those front speakers it makes a world of difference really um, surprising that they kind of left that out in, in this car because they had an opportunity to really make it sound good okay just want to show you what I came up with with the mounting uh, bracket here not the greatest fabrication, but it's stuff that I had laying around. Um, I just had to drill holes to get the right lengths here and here. These brackets fasten to the amp here and here, and I use this OEM stud that comes up. And, you know, here's the other one here, and there's kind of a little interference fit there. I mean, this thing doesn't want to move anyway, but um, that'll secure it nicely. And I thought about cutting these off with a Dremel and having a nice flat space to work with, but I like the idea of being able to return this to uh, the OEM setup if I need to. Okay, here it is. It's fastened to the trunk. I've got the wiring going to it. Um, one thing you might notice is the input power is from the OEM wiring harness, and you might be wondering why, and that would be a good observation because I was going to run a separate input power wire to it and uh, I want to try it with uh, just the OEM harness right now. Now just the reason why is because I'm going to use a subwoofer that's an 8 ohm load. It's a 4 ohm dual voice coil so it's wired for it as 8 ohms. So it's really not going to draw a lot from this amp, probably only about 80 watts. And the fronts could possibly run uh, higher because they're 2 ohm, uh, but they're not. it's not bridged. So the spec on this amp is with a bridged front, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to draw. It, it has the potential to draw enough where it would exceed the 15 amp fuse that's on this OEM harness. So if it does, I'm going to pop a fuse, I'm going to replace it and run an input wire. Now, I, I want to try it because I'm going to use this subwoofer temporarily, but there is kind of a part two to this installation. I'm going to get um, another sub, and I, I think I'll do a separate video on that. I think it's a pretty cool sub that will go, that fits in these cars, um, and we can talk about that when it arrives, and I'll do a video on it. Uh, so let's keep this wired the way it is. Uh, we'll go get the sub, we'll put it in, and we'll try the sound system. All right, here's the sub that we're going to put in for now. This is an 8-inch Rockford Fosgate P2. And this came out of one of our other cars that we sold. And you see how I have it wired? It's 
like to one of those trickle chargers. That way we can just plug and unplug, remove it from, from the trunk. So this will have to get secured in some way back there. But like I said, the second, the, uh, the sub that we're waiting for, um, that's going to be integrated into the car and that's going to be pretty cool. So we'll start out with this one though. All right, guys, so here's the subwoofer. It's just slid in the trunk. Let me pull it out here. Okay, there's uh, there's some damage to the surround on this. Uh, there's actually a tear. So this subwoofer is pretty much garbage, but it's going to get us through for a couple weeks while we wait for the enclosure to come in. And I'll make a video when that comes in because that'll be the permanent subwoofer installation. So for now, we'll use this. I'm gonna push that up against the seat and I'm gonna secure it with some straps and then like quick release straps, then just remove the straps. This connection is just as simple as that and then you can remove this. Um, so if we need the room, we'll just take it out of the car, but for now, uh, we'll use it as the sub but overall uh, the sounds really good because we improved the signal to the fronts that low-pass filter that we used that's a um, hundred Hertz cut off so it rolls off from a hundred Hertz up uh, the signal pretty much diminishes from there so these are getting Probably a better range than what they were getting from that amp. The OEM amp probably went a little higher, and that's why these things didn't really sound good. You know, they were trying to play uh, some frequencies that they just weren't really intended to do. So, and the other thing is really clean amp power now. So, the amp is much cleaner um, and it's got more power. So, these things sound good. Um, no reason to replace them, at least for now. So, so we'll be back with a part two to this when we install the uh, final subwoofer enclosure. And we'll see you then.